Guys, good Thursday afternoon. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to the I Love Seville show. Thank you kindly for joining us, and happy St. Patty's Day to all who are watching the program. Of course, we're live in Charlottesville across central Virginia, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world on the I Love Seville network on an absolute glorious day to be above the mud. Any day you can wake up, you can get out of bed, and you can breathe and live life. It's just a great day by me, and I am so pumped and excited for today's program because we get to spend about 20 to 30 minutes with just one of the fantastic people in the Charlottesville and Central Virginia community, and that's Brian O'Connor, the Virginia baseball coach, a man who is a national champion, a man who is a multi-time coach of the year, a family man, and just an all-around A-plus guy. I would be remiss if I, not, if I did not give some props to my friend and our colleague, Judah Wickhauer, We've called him the, the Kevin McMullen of our, of our program here on the I Love Seville Network. Ten years, uh, Judah Wickhauer and I have been working alongside each other. And Judah, if we could, go to the two shot and let's welcome Brian O'Connor himself to the program. Coach, good afternoon. How are you? Great, Jerry. Thanks for having me on. It's really an honor to be here in studio. Really excited about this opportunity. Thank you. It's our honor. Um, we're very grateful for your time, especially with how busy you are, and especially in season. I want to get out of your way and just make the show all about you. For the folks that don't know you, and they are few and far between now after 19 years, can you introduce yourself to everybody that's watching? Um, not baseball with this one, more yeah. passions, hobbies, family, and interests for the Brian O'Connor we, we may not know. Oh, th thanks, Jerry. I appreciate that. There, there is certainly a lot of life outside of baseball, right? Um, it's my job, but it doesn't, it doesn't define me, you know, and um, we're just, you know, my family's so fortunate to call Charlottesville home. You know, we arrived here 19 years ago. I was a 32-year-old, never been head coach, and fortunate to get the head coaching job here at the University of Virginia and, and brought our young family here, my wife Cindy, and we brought two children here, our, our oldest daughter Ellie, who is now a senior at High Point University, and uh, our second daughter Maggie, who's a second year engineering student here at UVA, and then shortly after our time here had our son Dylan, who's a current ninth grader at the Covenant School here in town, and an avid baseball player as well. So, you know, we just, we, we feel so fortunate Jerry to be in this wonderful community that we all love you know and um, this is home for us this is all our children know um, you know we've just been so blessed and so fortunate to be here uh, you know we, we love the community we love getting out in the community my wife and I love to come downtown or anywhere and get great meals we have such fantastic restaurants in the in this town um, you know so many different things to do we're more of an outdoors type family love to you know, go on hikes and, you know, get out into the Blue Ridge Mountains and, you know, just enjoy this beautiful community that we have, this beautiful state we have. And, and um, you know, just really, really fortunate to be here in Charlottesville and family loves it and looking forward to not only right now, but also also the future. So, Well, we, we love having you here. Um, we were talking about this off air before the show. I remember um, when you took the job fresh from Notre Dame, um, a reputation for being one of the best pitching coaches in the country. Um, you come to Charlottesville, um, first day in the job, and it's, 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 I'm working for the Daily Progress. It's me, um, it's, I believe Jeff White from the Richmond Times-Dispatch and Doug Dowdy from the Roanoke Times, and we're chatting with you in the press box, and all three of us were like, oh my gosh, this man is an incredible leader of people. He's got this contagious energy to him. We see how this was an incredible hire. Um, and you really took a program that was, um, you know, I'll be cut to the chase, needed some resuscitation, and you took a sleeping giant and you made it something special. Walk us through that flip book of what you remember of coming to Charlottesville 19 years ago, why you took the job, what interested you about the job, and those first few years on the job. Well, thanks, Sherry. It's, um, you know, as I said, it is a special place, and I, w I was 32 years old. I'd been the um, the pitching coach and recruiting coordinator at Notre Dame for nine years and was so fortunate to be at that wonderful institution as well. I've been really uh, blessed in my time that I've been to two outstanding institutions, Notre Dame and the University of Virginia, for a long time. And, you know, it was time for me to try to become a head coach. And, you know, I'll never forget the day that my boss at the time at Notre Dame called me and said, hey, I just got off the phone with your 
new boss. I said, what are you talking about? He says, I just got the phone with Craig Littlepage, the athletic director at the University of Virginia, and I think this is the job for you, right? And um, after doing some investigating into the University of Virginia, the baseball program, you know, I just felt like it was one of the sleeping giants in this country that just hadn't been tapped into yet. And so the, the combination of great education, great community, great high school baseball in the state, great conference in the ACC, the combination of those things, most of those kind of jobs had already been, you know, fulfilled and, and been tapped into and just was fortunate enough to interview and, and get the opportunity here. And, you know, really, Jerry, what, what happened was we had some immediate success. We had some really great players on that team. My, my first team here, guys like Ryan Zimmerman and Mark Reynolds, who have both had spectacular major league careers and other players as well. And, and just one right away and this community fell in love with it. We started to get people out to the stadium every year, continued to grow grow the brand, grow the program, getting more and more people out to Davenport Field. And, you know, the university continued to provide the resources and the people in the community supported it to continue to build this facility that we have that we now have, you know, Disharoon Park, where it seats 6,000 people and have a great family venue for people to come out and experience Virginia baseball. So just uh, felt fortunate, you know. Uh, Jerry, two, uh, two years prior to that, that I came to Virginia, I'd actually interviewed for the head coaching job at the University of Michigan and finished second and didn't get it. And, you know, some things we all learn that sometimes things happen for a reason. And it was, it was fortunate that that didn't happen because it landed me here and, uh, you know, have been here ever since. Serendipitous. Yeah. And it's to the benefit of our community, um, the fan base, and, and us as alumni of Virginia that, that you've uh, been the coach and worked have the coach by Craig Littlepage. Let's talk about this team. Um, you guys are on fire. Uh, you're 16 and one on the season. I mean, you've won 11 um, of your home games in 2022, all 11 of your home games you've won. I was at the, uh, the Sunday ball game against Penn State with my wife and our son. And the atmosphere, I believe that was an attendance record, um, that Sunday contest against Penn State. The atmosphere was, was vibrant. The energy was, was palpable and tangible. Yeah. Um, it appealed to me, the sports addict. It appealed to my wonderful wife, who's also a sports fan, uh, who also understands the sanity needed of taking a four-year-old out of the house. Okay, yeah. getting out of the house to maintain her sanity. And my kid loved it with the bounce houses that were at the gate. And then the hot dogs and the, and the, and the can. I mean, it was just a phenomenal family experience. I think you guys have some, some big news to reveal here of how your ball club and your program can really appeal even more to, to kids across the Commonwealth. Well, it can, and uh, and we do. You know, we've 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 been fortunate to have a lot of success this this season. Coming off a year last year where we made it to the College World Ser Series and finished in the top five in the country, and very proud of that accomplishment. And have a lot of players back from last year's team and have gotten off to a really hot start. But you know, it goes back to Jerry. I, I think we have a wonderful family friendly product, right? Um, we have a beautiful ballpark in Dishroom Park where there's a lot of seating options. There's general admission, there's reserve, there's a grass hill, there's things for, for kids uh, to play on there. And, you know, we're, we're, I'm proud to announce that from this point forward, the rest of the season, all kids, all, every, anybody that's 12th grade and younger from this point forward for the rest of the season gets into our ballpark for our games for free. That's awesome. Yeah. Huge, right? And I just, I just have this. You know, we our stadium seats six thousand people. We have a great product, and this community. Part of the reason we've had success in our in our program, Jerry, is this community has wrapped their arms around it. They really have. They've really supported it over the years, and it's allowed us to do what we've done. And it's an opportunity for us to reach back out to this community and say, "Hey, thank you." and come out and enjoy a great day at the ballpark. So from this point forward, you know, with an one adult ticket purchase, any kids 
are free into the stadium. So, you know what, I, it's great for Saturdays and Sundays to bring your families out, but even teenagers in town, high schoolers, come, come to a game Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Friday night, make it date night, you know. It's a fun, safe family environment where they can enjoy baseball, but also enjoy, enjoy other people in our community. So that's some news right there. 12th grade and under with the purchase of an adult ticket, kids are free for Virginia baseball home games. And let's go out um, by the hundreds, by the thousands, and let's support this team. Guys, they are 16 and one on the season and they are 11 and zero at home. Can you highlight the club, the players, and what, what is making this team tick, coach? Well, it's really, Jerry, a lot of different aspects. I, I felt like our pitching has been very, very consistent. Um, our defense has been outstanding as well, and those, those two go hand in hand in the game of baseball. But really the story in, the, in these first 17 ball games has been a, really our offensive uh, output. We've hit a lot of home runs. It's exciting for fans. You know, that's what they want to see. Uh, Jake Geloff is our third baseman that, that's leading the country right now in RBIs. He's got nine home runs. Um, he's so fun to watch. You know, he's just aggressive in the batter's box, gets his money's worth. we got a lot of different players in the lineup, some veteran players, but then we have some, some first years. Some days we're starting three or four first years in our lineup, so there's some youth to it as well. And it's an exciting team that's athletic and plays the game so incredibly hard, you know, and I just, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of college baseball. I'm a fan of college baseball because the way the players play the game. You know, a lot of people are fans of major leagues, but our, the college baseball player, you know, it's a finite amount of time, right? They, they get to play for three or four years, and they, they run every ball out. They hustle on and off the field. And, Jerry, I, the last thing I'll say about it is we've had some players that – you know, were young people, young baseball players in this community that ended up going to some local high schools and ended up wearing our uniform. Nick Kent, who played at Stab and played for us for three years, and now he's in the Rockies organization, and other players as well. Corey Hunt. Corey Hunt from Monticello, Monticello High School baseball coach. There, there's a long list of them, and we have some more coming. And let me tell you, I love that. I love when a young player commits to us and says, Coach, I grew up in this stadium. I grew up going to the, these games. And just seeing the young kids in the stands, you know, with their baseball gloves, with their mom or their dad or whoever they're with is awesome, you know. And uh, that makes me happy as a father that, you know, people can come to our games inexpensively and have great entertainment and grow a love for the game of baseball. Coach, I grew up at this stadium. I was a student at the University of Virginia, part-time employee with the Daily Progress Sports Department under Jerry Ratcliffe, and one of the first and biggest assignments that I had was covering your hire. Um, this was, was this 19, 19 years ago? Yeah. I mean, think about that. I am 40. <laughs> I grew up watching you and, and covering your team and matured and, and, and coach, like I'm even getting a, a, a little emotional right here. Like I've, I've it's been our honor. I mean, it's, it's watching you carry yourself. And it's and a lot of your colleagues, Brian Bolin, a lot, one of my favorites too, I believe one yeah. of your neighbors at one time yes. in Redfield. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 it's an honor to watch you guys and how you lead young men and women and, and you know, identify with the community and, and show us the way to be um, citizens and, and fathers and, and leaders of team members. Uh, like here at this business. I mean, I just think you are, I think the world of you, and, and we have a lot of folks watching Martinsville, hello, Williamsburg, hello, Lynchburg, hello, Arlington, hello. If you have questions for Coach O'Connor, put them in the feed anywhere you're watching on social media, and I will get to them live on air. Coach, what do you, what do you think of the, uh, the rest of the season here? I mean, you can't get any hotter than what you guys have done so far. How do you maintain this clip? Well, th th that's the challenge, but th it's the challenge that we look forward to, Jerry. It's, um, you know, we're, we're still in the early part. We're, we're, we're stepping into our second ACC weekend. We have Boston College here at home for all the fans, 4 o'clock Friday, 1 o'clock Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, the, the, the ACC conference is a grind. It's, it's 10 weekends. We're at weekend two coming up. You know, it, it, it comes down to us just playing good, consistent baseball. Pitching and defense is always where it is. You know, the offense is great. That's going to come and go at times. But, you know, we're, we're really talking to our guys right now about being grounded, you know, just 
you know, the next game is the most important game and not getting too far ahead of us. And so, you know, we got we have a lot of work still to do, and there's a lot of great opponents out there, and there will be some highs like we're at right now, and there will be some dips and some lows, and hopefully we can come out of those lows pretty quickly and have a great consistent season, and hopefully in the end uh, have an opportunity potentially to play for a chance to go to Omaha and a chance to win a national championship. You got multiple folks asking about that national championship. Yeah. Um, what's it What's it feel like to be a national champion? Um, what it was like to you when you finally won a national championship? Yeah. When you made this community so proud? Um, just give us the um, give us the emotional um, flip book of winning a national championship. We saw it on TV. Yeah. We all watched it on TV. But what was it like behind the scenes? Uh, just incredibly memorable. You know, um, the year before in 2014, we lost in the national championship game, as you all know, and to Vanderbilt. And the journey that our team went through in 2015 is like nothing I've experienced before in coaching. Just had a rash amount of injuries, had to overcome a lot of things, barely got ourselves into the NCAA tournament. You know, and found a way and got hot for four weeks. You know, and when you've been in that venue, you've been in that moment the year before and it didn't go your way, to have a group of young men come together and figure out, hey, this is what we have to do, and then to go do it, and to do it with a small group of people all, you know, rowing in the same direction is just awesome. You know, and for those players, hey, I hope that we as coaches have another opportunity to be in that moment. But for those young men, that was their one moment, you know. And so I hope we get a chance. I hope I get a chance to do it again. But those kids that were on that team, they don't get that opportunity again. And that they stood up and did what they needed to do at the defining moments in that season and especially at the end of the year is just uh, it, it moves you. It's, it, it reminds you as a coach, this is why I do what I do, right? Um, the wins are great and everything, but when you see young men stand up and do the things at critical times to be successful, it's just, it's priceless. It's, it's, why, it's why I coach, you know, is to make the impact on those young people and see them um, rise to the occasion at those key moments. So well said. How have you, um, as a coach, um, changed. Um, I talk about this a lot with our guests. Um, our son is four and seeing the world through his eyes and him experiencing things for the first time has been like the best yeah. um, as a father. I mean, it's not easy. I, you know this better than I certainly do. Parenthood is the best, hardest thing ever and like the longest, shortest thing ever. The, uh, some of the days feel like years, but then you're like, how is this kid four? It's flown by. And I've noticed with me, I've gotten more, um, I guess, vulnerable, um, more, um, I guess, a little bit softer, mm -hmm. um, more in tune with the moment than I was. Yeah. Um, how about you, um, from when you started to when you are now? I noticed a couple times you, you embody passion. And a couple of answers you give, you can see the passion and the emotion on your face. How have you seen yourself change personally as a coach and as a man? Well, first off, Jerry, I'd, I'd encourage you to think that you haven't gotten softer. You've gotten better. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, you know, I think having children of my own and seeing them, you know, matriculate through being youngsters at your son's age and then get into high school and move on to college and things like that. I think it also changes you as a coach. It changes me as a father, right, and as a person, but it also changes you in what I do, right? And, you know, as a young coach, you're eager, you know, and you want to challenge. You're fiery. Your, yeah, you're fiery and things like that, and you don't always take a deep breath and say, hey, what's maybe a better way to handle this, right? And so through experiences, I've learned and I've developed, right, in, in my coaching style. And I also feel like that has significantly helped our ball club over the years. It was also my and our other coaches' development and, and our growth. And so, you know, I, I, I just think I've, I've, I listen more than maybe I used to as a young coach. 
I'm more understanding to what they're going through. Uh, I think early on in my coaching time, I wanted it so bad, Jerry, for myself, and it was candidly, it was a little selfish, that sometimes that came off on the wrong way to the development of our players and, and our team. And that's changed over the years, and it's made me a better coach. It's made me a better father, a better person, and you know, it's made me better in my profession. So, um, listening a little bit more, being a little bit more understanding, but also with wisdom, you know, my decisions have been better. They've been quicker uh, to make adjustments throughout a season, throughout a game, things like that. That I think has translated into helping us being successful. Does the parenthood piece get easier? You know, it doesn't. It, it <laughs> it's just, just pretty hard right now. It just changes, you know, and that's what's great about it, right? I mean, when they're four, you, you know, you're chasing them around and things like that. And then when they all of a sudden get in high school, your worries get different, right? But you know you got to let them go, and that's hard. And then, you know, they get into college and the, 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 the worries really change and they, they're different. You know, you, you, you decide, are you going to let your daughter go and go to Mexico for a week for spring break, you know, during COVID and everything like that? And you just got to let them go. I can't believe I let her go, right? But like, you have to. And so it, it changes. It's great. And, and all the different journeys at the different ages are, are so rewarding. And, um, you know, it, I love it. Our friends in uh, Gloucester and Norfolk and Virginia Beach, welcome to the show. Um, all right, we have questions coming in. Brian Combs, I'm going to get your question um, from Pro Renata. Um, he says, I have a seven-year-old son. I grew up playing baseball as a left-handed pitcher. I've really loved the game for a, a lot of years. My son seems less to be excited about baseball these days and more excited about faster-moving things. How could I make the game more enticing to him? I think the idea of letting young kids in for free sounds like a great start. We will be there with our family. Please offer some advice of how I can get my son involved or interested in a game that I absolutely love growing up. Yeah, well, Brian, that's a, that's a great question. It's, it's one of the challenges in our game, right? I mean, you know, society has changed. Everybody you know, wants instant gratification. Everybody wants things right now. They want to, you know, they want their mind active all the time. They want to be doing something. And baseball's not that way, right? Uh, it's, it's a little bit more sl slow moving. The reason I love to go watch a baseball game is actually because of the downtime, right? I can, you can go with your family or go with somebody. You can have a conversation. You feel like you won't miss something, you know? Uh, but, you know, Brian, I'm, I'm glad to hear that y'all are going to come out to the dish and, and support our team. And I think bringing your son out to watching the games and maybe coming down and getting some autographs by the players, you know, and getting them out there as much as possible is, is, is something that can help. And then most importantly, I'd tell you is make it fun, right? Uh, do it in short spurts. Try to make it as fun a, a, as possible at that age because I'll tell you, once they get in the kind of the preteen ages, that's when we lose a lot of baseball players because it gets hard. Baseball is a game of failure. You know, the, it, it, I, I tell people all the time, if you play in the major leagues and you get a hit three out of ten times. You're you a Hall of Famer. Yeah, they put you in this place in Cooperstown, yeah, New York, you right. know. And so it's uh, – it's a You're failing seven thing. out of ten times, he's saying. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Yeah. That, I mean, you, if you do anything else, Jerry, where that you fail seven out of ten times, you don't have that job I think often. it's baseball and, and weather and the yeah. weatherman. Yeah. That's right. that's right. So maybe that's what I'll do when my baseball coach And you would be great over, at it, coach. Right? Yeah. There's a storm front coming down from the, from the east. 35% uh, chance, Coach O'Connor, it's going to hit Charlottesville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, so, Brian, I hope that helps you. You know, make it fun for him, right? Um, that's what it's intended to be. And, you know, hopefully he sticks with it and he can have, have an enjoyable time. We look forward to seeing you out at the ballpark. Jeff Beeler is watching. He's the uh, women's golf coach at uh, Radford watching the program right now. A lot of questions are coming in here. Um, can you tell us a story of your favorite players and something that we may not know about this player or players from the dugout or the locker room that made him great. And that's from Kelsey, who's watching in Hampton, Virginia. She says she's a UVA alum and a diehard Wahoo. Oh, Kelsey, thank you for that question. Um, there's many stories that I could tell you, but I, I do have to share 
one with you that, that fans would not know. Uh, we had this great player who played for us by the name of Chris Taylor. Okay. He's a current Los Angeles Dodger sure. and has won a world championship with them. And he's, he's fr- originally from Virginia Beach. And in 2011, in 2010, we were the number one ranked team in the country and lost in the Super Regional prior to going to the College World Series in our own ballpark. Full stadium, lost, and didn't go to Omaha, Oklahoma, did. In 2011, again, we were in the same scenario. We were the number one team in the country. We were playing Cal Irvine in the Super Regional. Game three, deciding game, you win it, you go to Omaha, you lose, you're staying home, and it's the same thing from last year. So we're playing Cal Irvine. It's in the, it's in the uh, eighth inning, and uh, Cal Irvine's up. They get the leadoff runner on. They, bu- they bun him over to second base. Our catcher, John Hicks, picks up the ball, throws the ball to second base. Chris Taylor's a shortstop, goes to second base. Ball hits off his glove, rolls into the outfield, right? And now, th- now they have runners on first and third, no outs. They score the, the, the go-ahead run, right? Come off the field. And we have a holding area, Jerry, behind our dugout that no fans can see. And Chris Taylor's back there. Right, and you can see the just the frustration and the disappointment on his face. Just feels like he just by not catching that ball, he just lost the game for Virginia to go back to Omaha and let these five thousand people in the stadium down. Right, and I'll, I remember as clear as day going to him and say, "Hey, Chris, you know it's not your fault. Get back in that dugout, cheer your team on. You never know what can happen." Well. Six batters later, with bases loaded and two outs, who stands at the plate? Chris Taylor. Drives in the two runs to send us back to Omaha. Stadium went nuts. One of the great memories in our stadium, right? And I just think about, you know, we talked earlier about failure in the game of baseball, right? And here's this young man learning that, and that's our classroom, right? You know, we have the classrooms on the other side of grounds, and the dish is our classroom to teach these young men how to pick themselves up, and you never know what can happen and be ready for the moment. And so Chris Taylor has that memory for the rest of his life, and that's what those things build and give you confidence. Last year in the play, going into the playoffs, he was pr- struggling, and he had to figure it out and had one of the best playoffs runs last year as a player could have. And so it's those memories and those lessons a lot of times that people don't see. They see the final product, somebody getting a hit, but they don't really know what goes into it. And those are the things I I love. Again, those are the reasons that I do what I do. Great story. Great story. Scott Aaronworth from Virginia Beach. I just want to say thank you to Coach for winning the national championship in 2015. My father was a huge UVA fan and was a University of Virginia graduate, and he passed away in 2014. I know he was smiling down from heaven in 2015 when you guys won the Natty. Thank you for what you do for the school that I love. From Scott Airworth in Virginia Beach. Hey, Scott. Thanks for that. Really, really appreciate those words. I'm sure your dad would... um loved it when that happened and I, I've you know Jerry I've heard that from so many people you know that they were overseas when we won it you know um, I've got a vi- an awesome video that I'd love to share with you sometime of inside one of the bars here in Charlottesville for the last out when we won the national championship and the place going nuts and everybody jumping up now I think it was Boylan Heights maybe you know and uh, there's just so many people that that when you accomplish something like that and you're a Virginia fan for so long how important it is to you and other people that support this great university. You got um, another dad watching the program who's a coach and you're going to love this question Kevin Higgins Um, and Kevin we appreciate your participation in the show he's watching in Greenwood Virginia he says I coach a flag football team for fifth and sixth graders starting next Wednesday what message and approach should I take when I meet with my team coach O'Connor he appreciates you and looks up to you. Kevin, thank you for your question. A great question. You're, you're, you're providing a pivotal role for these young kids that are in fifth and sixth grade. And I think the, the most important thing to teach them is it's about their team first, right? I, I preach that to our players all the time that, you know, hey, look out after e- each other, right? Appreciate each other when you're out there working. And then the, se- the second thing I'd tell you is, hey, effort's important, 
right? Um, giving your best all the time, no matter what happens, right? Yeah, do we want to win a game? Do we want to run a great play? Yes, it's all important. But when it's over, right, hey, did we look out after each other, our teammates, right, and do we give our best effort? You know, you do those things, you'll have a special experience. What is the... Um what is this? This question's come in multiple times. Uh, obviously, Ryan Zimmerman, one of the most recognized players from this program. Um, I'll try to see if I can paraphrase all these questions about Zim. Um, did you know that he was going to be a pro when you first started working with him? Um, folks are asking the best behind the scenes story about Zim, and what are some of the qualities that allowed him to be so special in the big leagues? Wow, there, there, there's a lot there. Um, I, I'll tell you, I. I remember getting the job here. I remember the day that we met, right? And then I remember the first week of practice in the fall. And I remember, you know, Coach Mack and I talking and, and looking at this guy playing third base, Ryan Zimmerman, say, I can tell you I had never seen a third baseman like this guy defensively, right? And so in a short period of time, Jerry, you watched him play. He said, this, there's something that separates this guy from, from others. Extremely talented, but there's that part of it. But then Ryan has always possessed these qualities that also separated him from the pack as well. And that is, first and foremost, his ability to rise his game up to a different le level when it mattered most. Ryan was always the best against the best pitchers. Right and against the best teams, and that's a special quality, right? That that then I believe helped him through his entire major league career. Um, Ryan's Ryan's very very grounded, right? He's a team first guy, has always been that way, has always looked out for others, and you can you can see that in his initiatives and that he had. He's you know Ryan through his foundation has donated back more than $3 million to this community, the UVA hospital, uh, for MS research. You know, his, his, his mother has MS. So what he has certainly done in the game of baseball, but what he has used his platform to make his community, the community of Washington, D.C., but also the Charlottesville community better is just incredibly special. So that's what I would say about Ryan. You know, there's – he's – a great, great player on the field, but he's even a better human being off the field. And you know, he's now a dad four times, four children. And um, you know, I'm sure he's going to love retirement and will get very involved in something down the road here. Um, I've learned this. Is my favorite part of my my job is this: is getting to interact with people like you um, and and leaders um, in this community. And I've learned behind every great leader, whether it's a man, whether it's a woman, is, is often just a fantastic partner. Mm. And oftentimes one of the um, side effects of leadership, especially leadership when it comes to high level jobs like yours, is time away from family. Mm -hmm. um, so if we could highlight um, your, your wife, your family, and all the incredible um, emotional support uh, and love that they've offered um, to you along this journey. Well, Jerry, none of us can do what we can do without you know, somebody by our side, right? And that comes in different forms, right? That might be parents, you know, that might be a partner, whoever it might be, we need people around us because there, no, whether it's your job, you know, my job, anybody else, there's, there's going to be tough days, you know, and who helps us and picks us up and, you know, carries us through in those tough, challenging days. A, co a coach is a little bit different. You know, we're gone a lot. There's a lot of travel. There's a lot of recruiting. There's a lot of late nights, you know, and, um, you know, my wife and I had a conversation when I decided to get into this profession. My wife, Cindy, is my high school sweetheart. Right. Right. And, um, you know, she also graduated from nursing school from Creighton as well. And, you know, when we started this journey together and I decided that I wanted to coach, you know, we had a conversation to say, this is what the lifestyle is. And she has always been 100% on board, completely supportive. We we do everything we can to find our our moments, right? Whether it be her and I, you know, it might be 
you, know, you, you stay home until 10 o'clock in the mor morning one morning or you know we we grab lunch downtown one day or whatever it might be and that's important to continue to have in a strong relationship but also too with family you know we make sure that we set the time aside whether it's a week at the beach or you know my daughter came down for us to watch, watch us play at Duke last Friday night and we went and had dinner. Trying to find those moments is, is critically important because for me as a coach, they are my support structure. And if, it, if, if I don't have them, then why am I doing it? Right? Well said. And, you know, and, and as a coach, you have an opportunity when you have children, they, they're, they're invested in it. They're involved in it. Right? When we lose, it hurts them. You know? And so it's... Uh, it's been fun, and they've been my support team, and you know, as well as my assistant coaches, their families. We're all we're all in it together, and so they've all been incredibly supportive in this journey. Let's say it's date night in the off season. Where is Coach and uh, Mrs. O'Connor going to go, and what are they going to order? Oh wow! Is that the toughest question? Yeah, here? I tell you, that's a, that's a tough one because there's so many so great many. Winnies. Right? You know, um, we love the local. Uh, we love Maya. Um, Great ones, you know. Yeah, those those are a couple of the of the ones that we hit quite often. Uh, th but there's so many of them, and we've tried them all. You know, um, you know, we love s sitting at the top of the Cork Hotel when the when the weather's great. You know, and there's just so many great places. Um, you know, we we had a beautiful dinner a couple of months ago at the new place, the new restaurant out at Keswick. Okay, you know, Marigold. Marigold, mm -hmm. loved it, had a great night. You know, so there's just different spots in this. We're, we're so fortunate in this community, have great places to, uh, to get a nice meal and, and enjoy time. How do you keep the uh, passion, Coach? You embody passion. How do you yeah. keep it at this level all the time? Uh, I, you know, I'd say, Jerry, it's, it might be a little bit of fear of failure. Right, um, I don't want to fail. Right, um, I know there's a lot of people that are counting on us being successful. Obviously, the 37 young men that wear wear our uniform, right? They're invested in this. They came here to not only develop as players and as people as students, but also to win. Right, um, you know, there there's you got assistant coaches, you got support staffs and their families, and it's a large operation and. And when you're the leader of it, you feel responsible for all of it. And so maybe that's part of what's driven me over the years that I'm just consumed with, you know, I don't want to not be successful. And, and I love the thought, Jerry, of I love making something better, right? I love, you know, getting better. That's why we've got these new initiatives to get people out at the stadium to create the best possible atmosphere that we can because I want to make it better than it is right now. You know, and so that's what drives me. It's what makes it a lot of, a lot of fun. And and um, you know, the day that I that I don't feel that way is the day that I'll you know step away and maybe run podcasts. I don't know. <laughs> he, he would be so good at a podcast, the Coach O'Connor Show. We would be so lucky to host him on this network. We would love that. Um, hopefully, it's not anytime soon, guys. Uh, we have nine states on the feed. We're going to wind down this interview because the man is in season. Um, Aaron Zakoff and Mark Lebro, welcome on Twitter. Randy Simmons, much of the Commonwealth watching the program. Freddie um, is watching in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Very proud of the boys, he says. Dickerson and all the coaches. Freddie can't wait to wear that shirt in 2023. Okay, yeah. so you got to – is that a recruit right yeah, there? Yeah, we've got recruits watching yeah, it Yeah, got recruits Florida. watching the show. I just highlighted his Facebook profile. It's him wearing the jersey right here. All right, I don't, I don't know what the rules are here. So, uh, all right, so why don't we do this, Coach? Um, you got a, a heck of a baseball team. Um, a heck of a baseball team. Let's close the interview with a message to the community. Guys, 12th grade and under, free admission with an adult ticket purchase. Bring your kids and your family. Let's get this ballpark sold out. A message to everybody in the states that are watching the show about this ball club. Hey, Jerry, I, I, I am so excited about this ball club. Not only do I feel like we've got a talented club, but I also feel like we have a great opportunity in this community for anybody to come out and support this team and just have a great day at the ballpark. We have so many home games in the rest of the season, starting this weekend against Boston College, 4 o'clock Friday, 1 o'clock Saturday, Sunday. And it's just, as you experience with your family, it's a wonderful environment, and we need you. 
you. We can't do it without you, and let's build this thing and make it the best it can be. He's fantastic, guys. His name is Brian O'Connor, the head baseball coach at the University of Virginia, a national champion, and a man that does everything the right way, um, off the diamond, on the diamond, you name it. Um, truly, truly, truly grateful for your time today, Coach. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks for having me on. It was a real pleasure. It was our pleasure. I love Seaville. Thank you. So do we. <laughs> Brian O'Connor, guys. We absolutely love this guy. Um, the show is back tomorrow at 1230 with the I Love Seaville show. And you see what we're trying to do? We're just trying to showcase the best of the community. It is the best of the community on this show. Thank you to Brian O'Connor and Judah Wickhauer. My name is Jerry Miller. You guys have a great afternoon and enjoy St. Patty's Day. Take care, everyone. Tell us when we're clear here.